We had the coolest thing happen last week in our weekly update. So we send a, you know, an, an email out to everybody that signs up for our email list. And we were explaining to folks that when you launch a book, you know, there's a jillion things out there vying for people's attention, particularly on Amazon. Yeah. Where 70% of all books are now purchased. And and so in order to get, you know, our message in front of the world, we were asking our friends to do some pre-orders for us to kick in the algorithm at Amazon. And so we asked our friends to do that. And then a couple of days later on Amazon, that Resilient, the new book that's coming out, was number one in PTSD recovery, post-traumatic stress disorder recovery, which I didn't even know was a category right. at Amazon. But that was amazing because it put it in front of a whole new audience. Yes. And it is healing and it is PTSD recovery, so it's not disingenuous. But I just thought that was so cool. So thanks, everybody, for joining in on that campaign Welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast. John and Alan in the studio here in the week of April 18th. And we're coming off of a couple of weeks of some of the exercises that are in Resilient. We played chapter eight from the audiobook two weeks ago, and then Stace right. and Gloria and I were talking about the experience of the prayer of descent. Resilient has a lot of that in it, of different exercises, different ways of experiencing more of God more of his strength, more of his resilience into our hearts and souls at this time. John, I know you've been writing it for a while, but it couldn't be more perfect for the times we're in right now, more needed. And yeah, I think if people like from a few weeks ago when they heard you reading chapter eight, a lot of people love to experience a book that way. And so you can go online to Amazon, you can pre-order the book, the physical book, but also the book on audio. And both will be out June 7th. But as you said, the pre-orders really help us because it rises up on Amazon into their algorithms, their filters, their promotions. And it's the best way to help other people discover this book even before it's out. Yeah, you have to, you have to create momentum because the whole thing is actually it's digitized. It's computerized. It's, there aren't right. even people behind the decision making. <laughs> it's just all built into their algorithms. And as interest is being shown, boot, 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 you know, it just moves farther up. Then they put it in front of people. They send out, right. you know, email alerts and stuff. So that would be helpful, gang, if you're interested in that. And and thanks everybody, because getting it out in front of the PTSD audience was was a beautiful, unexpected turn and such a Jesus thing because it's healing and it's restorative and we we do want to get our message to the world and there's new there's new things and there's new exercises new practices with God in the book and that got you thinking about new things it did and so we are leaving that now turning our attention to some other things in the weeks ahead but it got you thinking about embracing new things. Totally. Yeah. It, I mean, part of it, John, is just, I am a, I feel like a, a really creative guy, but I'm also very much a creature of habit. And so I find things I like and I kind of then get stuck in, well, this is kind of my rhythm and this is what I like to do. And if we go out to eat, of course, it's going to be a Mexican restaurant, you know, and, uh, and do you order the same thing most of the time? Oh, fajitas every time, <laughs> steak fajitas every time, a margarita every time, guacamole every time. Like it's the same. And, and even my, you know, kids or Kelly will say, you know, Alan, you like, don't you get tired of that? And I'm like, no, I found what I love, man. I like this. I don't need to waste time looking at other things anymore. Right. And there's, a little bit of a beauty to being simple and being known for what you like, but also you can get stuck in patterns and really miss a lot of opportunity for growth and just to try new things and, and stretch and experience. 
what's next. And so as we were talking about the podcast today, I just thought it'd be a fascinating conversation to go into how do we actively choose the new in our lives? And John, by that, I mean, there are so many things that that are going to change and do change like daily, hourly in our world that we have to react to. And so there's new coming at us all the time. Mm. That's not what I'm talking about mm-hmm. because those things mm. are going to happen and we need to walk well in them, but those aren't choices we make necessarily as much as, okay, the economy just had this happen to it or this you know, political issue or this city issue. But that's reactive. Right. Isn't it? Right. It's reactive and it's honestly not something that you're controlling yes. anyway. Like yes. you, you can't wake up and decide yes. how the United States is going or whatever country you live in is going to run that day. Yes. You can pray, but you can't control it. But I'm talking about things within our power, choices within our power in a personal way to just experience the new. Like the chili relleno. Exactly. <laughs> but I still want the fajitas, but I need <laughs> I need the new. Um, so like, let me give you- Should we call this the chili relleno podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm getting hungry right now. You know, let me give you an example of just like what this might look like. So in my own life, I have always loved woodworking, but I remember it through high school memories where we had a shop. And when I was in wood shop, it was the highlight of my day. I loved the smell of wood, the, you know, like when you cut wood, the shavings and the different types of wood, like the beauty of walnut and cherry and how to make things. And so we had this cantankerous shop dude who was at the time probably 60. Um, oh, so old. Well, it, when you're <laughs> when you're 14, that's ancient, I know, right? I know. Um, so he he would invite us though into he was a character, and he would basically say, What do you want to create? What do you want to do? What do you want to dream it up and let's do it? And there was every tool in this. It was a separate building from the school. You'd walk out of the school into this shop. And I mean, people that were in high school were making roll top desks. They were making clocks, their coffee tables, bookshelves. And so I loved it. My heart came alive with it. And I still have a lot of those pieces, you know, by the way, like that, that are in our home that I created from back then. But then you get into college and, you know, you're single in an apartment and there's no place for, you don't have a lathe and you don't have all these massive pieces of equipment. And so that dream just kind of went away and without me ever letting it go. And I just had the pieces I had created. Well, fast forward to now. And in the last year or so, Chase, my youngest son has really been wanting to get into woodwork and he'll say, Hey dad, you know, let's, let's build a bookcase. And I have scrap wood around our garage, but the problem is the only wood tool I have is a handsaw. You can't make a bookcase. Vuga, 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 right? vuga, 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 vuga. And it just, and I, and I'm like, I want to go back. Like I see his desire. It awakened my desire, but I realize I don't have anything to make this come alive right now in terms of actually doing it. And so in the last few weeks, Chase and I have been talking about what if we convert part of our garage to a place that we can actually have equipment to build and to make things, a table saw, you know, um, three or four pieces of basic equipment that you can get, you know, you have to go out and buy, but then you can actually make things. You can actually make the joints. You can actually... You know, and then Kelly and I started talking about we love hardwood floors where we have some carpet in our home. And so now I'm realizing I could use that for that as well. And so, John, it's it's something in me that when I gave myself permission to dream of like, how could I step into something new now that actually God gave me a taste of as a boy? And I, I have to invest in equipment 
and it's not cheap. And I, you know, I'm not going to put pressure on Chase to be out in the garage with me every time I'm building something, but he's invited and it's something we can do mm. together. And it's something I now can do around the home more. That's a, just one example of it's a brand new adventure. It's something that you will have to relearn because, I mean, come on, when I was doing this in high school, I was doing it, but I had the master sage shop man who had done it his whole life. So anything I was doing, he was able to help on the lathe or he was able to help form or fit. So that's one example of something new that just awakens my heart. Mm. And if I just kind of thought, well, that'd be cool, but it was for then, then I leave it in the past. Yes. Rather yeah. than step into the new by choosing something now. Yes. Getting unstuck is a fascinating idea. Where am I stuck, Lord? What, it, what new things are you inviting me into? And thinking back to the last two weeks, we were inviting people into new ways of experiencing God, new ways of experiencing Jesus within us, new ways of praying. Right. And if you don't open yourself up to new things anywhere in your life, you're going to miss out on right. that, right? Oh, right. I mean, I think you become rigid over time. And as the older you get, the more so of, I just want the steak fajitas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't sound like that, <laughs> but yeah, I do kind of. And that's, and, and, you know, we start to have our ways that we see things and do things and other people can see it in us far more than we can see it in ourselves usually because it just makes sense to who we are, we think. But this getting unstuck, um, the beautiful thing about trying new things, I think, too, is it allows us to see God in new ways mm. because we experience him in new ways. Because when you're doing the same thing over and over, you know, when we drive to the outpost, we probably some days see the mountains. There's such beauty. But many days, I won't even notice it. I've just seen it so many times every day. I, I don't see it anymore. But for people that are traveling here, they see it big time. Yes. They pull off the side of the road yes. and, and step out to take a photo or just to take it in. And so I think in the same way, when we will choose new things mm -hmm. in our lives, to go to a new restaurant, to listen to a different station on our radio, different mm -hmm. type of music, to you know, be the student rather than the master. Mm -hmm. It's something. Well, then not only does it stretch you, but when we go into those things with God, I think it it shows us different facets of who God is. This is a fascinating thing because I'm going to give an analogy through exercise. Yeah. So the idea of training, building physical strength, is muscle confusion. That if you just do the same exercise, like I just run, or I just do the treadmill, or I only lift weights, or you know I only go to my aerobics class, actually it's not the mm. best for your body because you're only working one muscle group, and the rest of the muscles are not getting right. Right. Exercise. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if that's true of the soul, if that's true of the heart, that the rest of you as a human being, is not being called out, is not being exercised mm. if, if all we are doing is the same. I'm just thinking even the same quiet time for heaven's sakes, yeah. right? Or you only listen to, oops, the same podcast. Now, don't drop this one because <laughs> this, was, this is it's one right. you want to keep in your file. But yeah, the sameness isn't calling forth things in your soul. I think so. Yeah. I think the sameness things grow a little bit stale, rigid, expected, um, boredom sets in. I'll speak for myself, but when you get to a point where everything is pretty predictable and routine and you've got it down and you pull it, you know, you drive home the same way. You park in the same parking spot. Park in the same. <laughs> I do park in the same parking spot. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and, and you, so you start going through life that way, John, I think when things get that 
predictable and that just like there's nothing new. I think when we do that, we start to look for relief in other ways because we're just bored with life. Yep. So then, you know, it's like there can be unhealthy ways that we go where if we are constantly surrounding ourselves with new learning, new hobbies, a new place to to eat, a new place to, you know, like instead of going to the movies, go to a, a play, yeah. uh, go to a concert, yeah. you know. I haven't been, Kelly and I were talking about, I haven't been to a concert in, I don't know, over a decade. And I used to love going to concerts and hearing lo- our favorite, you know, groups live. Yes. And we lived near Red Rocks. I mean, a phenomenal place to hear music. And it just kind of fell off the radar. Yes. And so now we're looking at possible concerts in the Colorado area that we can just go and have a live event and experience that again. So, yeah, I think when you do that, you grow, you stretch. Sometimes you have to be willing to go, sometimes it's going to be a bust. Like, I'm going to try something new. Yep. And I'm going to think, well, I went to the Thai restaurant and I missed the fajitas and it wasn't even that good. But that's okay, you know, like, because the next time it's the Italian restaurant or it's, if you're out with another couple, you let them choose. And to me, John, it's just a a way that is causing me to come more alive. Okay, I'm cracking up because the joke in our house is chicken. Like, it's Stacy's fallback go-to, you know, as a meal planner, as a mom, you know, trying to get things done chicken. We're going to have grilled chicken this night. And then a couple nights later, we're going to have, you know, chicken casserole. And then a couple nights later, it's, you know, chicken enchiladas. <laughs> and, and I came home one day and I said, Hey babe, what's for dinner tonight? She said, Oh honey, it's chicken. And I literally fell on the floor in the kitchen and said, Oh God, no. <laughs> and it was the beginning of the awareness and she would admit this, that she had fallen into a routine, that she'd fallen just into a, a default go-to. And we were having chicken like four, five nights a week. That's a lot of chicken. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, no more <laughs> chicken, I beg of you. <laughs> Things like that, yeah. where, where you fall into the customary, you fall into the routine, and the human personality seeks stability. This is known about the human brain is that we seek a status quo. We feel best. You feel better when you sleep in your own bed than yeah. when you sleep in a hotel bed, right? right. Yeah. It's just, you know, we love stability. We love the status quo. That's good for humanity. But at the same time, what you're inviting us into consider is, yeah, but maybe you're stuck. Right. Maybe you're stuck. So we go to see some friends and there was a pickleball court. Now, I, I I had heard about pickleball, but it was funny. Even the name turned me off. I'm like, yeah, not really into that. <laughs> yeah. but whatever that is, it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> sound like it's for me. It's like a large game of ping pong played on a tennis court. You have large paddles that are solid. You have a big plastic ball, and you're on a tennis court type format, but it's a smaller, you know, the the painted lines are small. Anyway, it's a hoot. And obviously I am way late to the pickleball revolution here. I understand that. But we started playing and we had an absolute gas. And the muscle group thing, like the next day, I couldn't believe all these new muscles that were <laughs> aching in my body, but it was such a, it was such a joyful experience to just do something wacky, different, joyful, playful. Now we're hooked. That's awesome. Yeah. And I've, I've started that with bowling and it's, it's an interest that, uh, one of my sons has. And so he's always practicing and he's always out there. And a lot of times he'll just go by himself to get better because he's in a league and I've started to join him occasionally. And it, like, I don't have the best form, you know, how bowlers will kick their leg back and kind of have the, I mean, some guys are really super serious, but I'm just having a blast with it. And it reminded me though of like, when I finish, I'm sore and yeah, parts well, of my legs. Well, this is how, this is actually how bow hunting came into my life. So I didn't grow up in a hunting family. My dad was a fisherman 
for which I'm eternally grateful because he would take me on these weekend fishing yeah. trips and I love it to this day. But we took up hunting when we came to Colorado and it was only when my son turned 13 that he said, it was Blaine, he said, I really want to learn archery, I really want to learn bow hunting and the whole world of you know bows and the technique and the skill of that. It's become an enormous joy in our life. It was a huge step outside my comfort zone. Brand new, I'm trying to be the dad, lead my son in this. We were learning together. And one of the exquisite things about archery hunting is how intimate you have to be with nature. From a rifle, right, you can be at a fairly long distance from your quarry. Yeah. But with archery, you have to be very, very, very close to, to be responsible mm. with the shot that you take. And so it invites you into a, a completely new experience of the woods. Like, what is the wind doing? Why do the animals just go silent? How come there's no birds right now? What's, what is taking place around me? It has made us far more tuned into nature and, and, and weather and the experience of the animals and their patterns and their behaviors. And if you want to fill the freezer, I don't recommend archery hunting. Most, most bow hunters know that. But in terms of the experience, it's a brand new thing. It's like a whole different way of being in nature and being in the woods. And thank you, Blaine, Interesting. for inviting us into that and, and for me getting unstuck from something I did know um, into something brand new that's been a source of rich, rich experiences with God. I love that story. Yeah, and and what we're asking, I think, and inviting others into is think about things that you either have a desire for or perhaps you've seen other people do that you go, huh, like, I kind of wish I had tried that or done that. And break the agreement that it's too late or that you're not qualified enough or that you'll never be able to do that. And and it could be a really small thing. It could be a really cool new adventure. But I think when we will allow ourselves to look at life as I've kind of gotten in a routine and there's some good things, like you said, there's some stability and comfort and rhythms that are good. But what are the places in my life that I can try new things, choose new things actively? And John, you know, like one thing as we're talking, I'm realizing date nights with Kelly. Like we have a couple of restaurants that we go to. We have a couple of things that we like to do. And it's fun. And we have a great time and she's enjoying it and I'm enjoying it. But like I could buy concert tickets and just not even tell her where we were going, right? Or to a Broadway play that's in town or or a hike that we haven't been to before. Like there are all these things if we'll just look at life out of the way we've done it into what could be, I think it helps us see our spouse in new ways. It helps us explore and try new adventures. And the last thing is I think it helps, like I said, helps us see God in new ways. Mm -hmm. Because a big question I've been going to God with recently is, tell me something about you I don't know. Oh, beautiful. Which is a whole different question to God than, can you make this work in my life? Or I need help on, you know, those are important prayers too. But when Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the garden, I've got to believe it was all new, all wonder and awe and intimacy. and. Like, to me, that's a great question to go to God with is, like, how did you feel when this happened in the, with the fall or with creation? Or tell me something about you that you you wish your sons and daughters wanted to know, just to know mm, you. That's beautiful. So all of that together to me, just as a way to put new wind in ourselves and to grow and to be invited into terrain that we may never have explored otherwise. So get the chili relleno next time, Alan. I'm doing it. Yeah. Great stuff. Thanks for bringing that in today. 